It's a bird, it's a plane, it's Elon Musk's robo-taxi. Keep watching to see how Tesla and other brands are automating the transportation industry for the future. On April 7, 2022, Elon Musk announced Tesla's newest innovation, the robo-taxi. He made the announcement during the grand opening of Tesla's $1.1 billion gigafactory located in Austin, Texas. Musk is referring to a self-driving car capable of operating with no one inside and able to pick up passengers and deliver them to their chosen locations. It's basically Uber or Lyft, just without the people. In 2019, Musk hinted that his robo-taxi would be a Model 3 sedan or the Model Y SUV. This would make sense as these cars are already offered with full self-driving functions. However, during the grand opening, he said that it would be a dedicated robo-taxi that's going to look quite futuristic. If the Cybertruck is anything to go off of, futuristic means no door handles. During his first quarterly earnings call this month, Musk said the vehicle will be highly optimized for for autonomy. It won't have a steering wheel or pedals. A human literally won't be able to drive it. But before we talk more about the taxi of the future, we need to talk about his original idea. In 2016, Elon Musk published his Master Plan Part 2. A major part of this plan was to make Tesla vehicles fully autonomous. At the time, his plan was to outfit normal Teslas with full self-driving capabilities. Then once they achieved FSD, they would create a Tesla network. This would be a taxi service that would make use of vehicles owned by Tesla and customer cars that would be hired out when not in use. The speed bump in Musk's plan has always been the FSD capability. The current approach relies solely on a camera system unlike other automakers who are using a combination of cameras, lidar, and radar. He's been promising full self-driving for a long time and customers have even paid $12,000 for the feature. But the finish line seems to keep moving further away. In his words, he's never seen more false dawns or false breakthroughs than he's seen in self-driving. And he says the reason for this is that in order to sell the full self-driving, you have to solve real-world artificial intelligence problems, which no one has solved. The whole road system is made for biological neural nets and eyes. So to solve driving, Tesla has to solve neural nets and cameras to a degree of capability, on par or exceeding humans. The car needs to be able to drive itself better than a human could. Depending on the driver, that might not be too difficult. His most recent promise is to have FSD perfected and in every paying customer's Tesla by the end of 2022. It could just be another case of a tech billionaire crying wolf, but you never know. He already took over Twitter, maybe this will be the year of robocars. Back to the new idea, Tesla has decided to pivot from the original self-driving plan to make a whole new vehicle. This seems like a good strategy since they've been focused on achieving FSD in their current hardware in existing cars and it hasn't panned out. The new vehicle will be built specifically for autonomy, which leaves a lot more freedom in the design. They're never going to be driven by a human, so a driver's seat and controls aren't really required. This also leaves room to add features that wouldn't necessarily be possible in a typical car like face-to-face -face seating and big sliding doors for easy access. Once FSD is fully functional, the world is Tesla's oyster in terms of design and amenities. A big concern when it comes to a Tesla taxi is how much it will cost, both to produce and to use. The average consumer can't afford a Tesla even without the FSD. The cost to build a self-driving Tesla is unclear because that information is private within the company. However, during his Q1 call, Musk explained that the design of the vehicle will be focused on cost per mile. He acknowledged that Teslas are inaccessible for many people, and he claimed that introducing robo-taxis will provide customers with, by far, the lowest cost per mile of transport they have ever experienced. He believes that the taxi is going to cost less per mile than a subsidized bus ticket. For reference, the average price of a bus ride in the US is about $2. If what he says is true, then robo-taxis will revolutionize car ownership. It would actually be cheaper to use one of Tesla's robo-taxis than it would be to own your own car. But don't call a car shop just yet. 
Although there is a good bit of information about the robo-taxi online, we still haven't seen a prototype. Elon hinted that Tesla plans to announce the vehicle in 2023 and begin mass production in 2024. But he made it clear that Tesla's focus in the short term, and in 2022 specifically, is to scale operations to increase production capacity. 2023 will be the year for new vehicles. The futuristic Cybertruck, the Tesla Semi, and the new Roadster will all enter production next year. The future will be Elon Musk's world, and we'll just be living in it. Former Waymo CEO John Krafsik says their automated cars cost between $130,000 and $150,000. That's a very high number, but costs will go down as technologies used to automate cars become more standard and less expensive. An example would be Waymo's LiDAR system. Their engineering team was able to build a version that costs 90% less than what used to be a $75,000 unit. Back in 2009, the former subsidiary of Alphabet began working on the Google self-driving car project. Since their first vehicle, they've driven more than 20 billion miles in simulation and over 20 million miles on public roads. In 2015, in Austin, Texas, they produced the first fully autonomous ride on public roads with a car called the Firefly. It had custom sensors, computers, steering, and braking with no steering wheel or pedals. The passenger in this momentous ride was a man named Steve Mahan, who is legally blind. In 2016, Waymo became an independent autonomous driving technology company, and in 2017, they partnered with the FCA to introduce a modified version of the 2017 Chrysler Pacifica hybrid minivan to their fleet. Also in 2017, they started the Early Rider Program. This was an opportunity for residents in Phoenix, Arizona to join them in their first public trials of autonomous cars. Their feedback was instrumental in achieving one of the company's biggest breakthroughs, Waymo One. In 2018, Waymo launched a ride-hailing service similar to Uber or Lyft called Waymo One. With this app, people living in certain areas in the suburbs of Phoenix can call on an autonomous car to give them a ride. As of 2020, anyone in the U.S. can download the Waymo One app and get a cab, as long as they happen to be in their very, very small service radius. So how does this technology work? When they talk about their self-driving system, they call it the Waymo Driver, the world most experienced driver. This is based on how many miles they've driven and collected data with the system. To prepare the Waymo driver to operate in a new area, they map the territory with minute detail. They mark everything from lane markers to stop signs, curbs, and crosswalks. They do this so the system doesn't only rely on external data like GPS, which can lose signal strength. Waymo driver uses the custom maps and the real-time sensor data to determine its exact location on the road at all times. While the car is on the road, its sensors will take in everything around it and compare that to its data. It knows that a cyclist moves differently from a car or a pedestrian. Then it can predict many possible paths other road users might take. Then it uses that information to plan the safest route just for you. No one wants to admit that an AI can drive better than them, but this car might drive better than most people, assuming it works. A reporter for Alphabet named Jennifer Elias took a ride with Waymo to see what the experience was like. Through her experiment, we know there's a hog feature in the app for when you can't find the car. As the name would suggest, you tap a button and the car honks so you can find it. The car itself displays the Waymo logo on the side. Before you get in, the screen on the dashboard displays your initials. Then when you sit down and strap in, a female voice welcomes you and a screen on the back of the seat displays a map with the car on the road. These cars still have steering wheels and pedals because they have human drivers sit in on rides when the weather is bad. For that reason, they have a partition between the front and back seats to prevent 
prevent riders from touching the controls. Overall, Elias's ride seemed pretty smooth. She mentioned a few hiccups, including the car parking in illegal fire zones and an abrupt stop for a pedestrian, but even with the bugs, it looks like self-driving cars are gonna be big in the next decade. But it won't be a quick transition at all. Waymo has been working on autonomous vehicles for 13 years, and so far they have self-driving cars operating fluidly on city streets in one U.S. market, and not even all of Phoenix, just parts of it. And even those vehicles aren't perfect yet. We still have plenty of time before the robots take over. Another company working towards autonomous cars is Cruise. General Motors acquired Cruise in 2016. Since then, it has brought on investors like Honda Motor, SoftBank Vision Fund, Walmart, and Microsoft. It's unclear how much one of their robo-taxis costs to produce, but they believe it costs $1.5 per mile to ride in them. The company believes it will have a fleet of at least 1 million self-driving vehicles by 2030. They've been testing robo-taxis in San Francisco for years, and they opened driverless taxi services in January of this year. But there's plenty of limitations. The first rides happened in the modified Chevy Bolt EV cruise vehicles, but these weren't open to the public. Riders were all hand-picked members of the public chosen by cruise employees. After the initial rides, they opened a wait list that anyone can sign up for, but you have to list what San Francisco neighborhood you live in and what times of day you're likely to use the service. We didn't know there was going to be a test for this thing. Once the public services get started, there will only be trips between 11 p.m. and 5 a.m., mostly in the west side of the city. Traffic and business is much calmer during those times on that side of SF. From what we gather, it's safer for the active robo-taxis to stick to one area of a city where they can predict traffic patterns. Cruise projects that rides will cost less than $2 per mile, but for now, the rides are free. Elon Musk has Tesla, Google had Waymo, and Cruise is partnered with Microsoft. It's only natural that Jeff Bezos himself would get involved with the robo-taxis. In 2020, Amazon acquired Zooks, an autonomous vehicle startup. The Zooks robo-taxi is unlike any other on the market. It doesn't look anything like a traditional car. The design has more in common with Cinderella's pumpkin mobile than a Chevy Bolt. They call it a carriage-style car because the passengers face each other and there's no space for a driver or passenger seat. The rounded and compact design give the vehicles a cartoonish quality, but it has impressive real-world technology. It has cameras, lidars, and radars on all four corners to see all surroundings. The sensor placement provides an overlapping field of view and 360-degree coverage, which allows it to see in all directions equally well. It also has bi-directional driving capabilities and four-wheel steering. These allow it to change directions without having to go in reverse and navigate in compact spaces. It can speed up to 70 25 miles per hour and it can run up to 16 hours on a single charge. The Zooks cars can see 150 meters in all directions, even around corners. They can see what's coming long before it's anywhere near the vehicle. And Zooks doesn't just see the objects, it can identify them. Its perception software categorizes pedestrians and other road users in real time. And similar to Waymo, Zooks vehicles drive in predefined areas using a geometric and semantic map. Over time, the system collects data so it can anticipate what other drivers will do next. And then it brings its perceptions, its map, and its predictions all together to move the car smoothly through dense urban environments. The Zooks vehicles are true examples of artificial intelligence. Their systems act like a brain, gathering information and experience and applying that in future situations. They have a system called teleguidance that helps the cars navigate edge cases, meaning rare and complex driving situations. The vehicles learn from those interactions and require less help with similar cases in the future. Zooks, like any other autonomous vehicle brand, is far from making self-driving cars the norm. Up until this year, they've been testing their vehicles in San Francisco, Las Vegas, and Foster City, California. These areas were great for giving the cars a fairly dense place to get used to self-driving, but they all have one commonality. They don't get a lot of rain. 
Zooks plans to open an engineering office and operations facility in Seattle by the end of 2022. It will be their new base of operations and it will be staffed by mostly new employees as part of their goal to create 450 new jobs. It's a little known fact that Amazon's headquarters take up a large chunk of downtown Seattle, so it makes sense that their subsidiary would move right in. However, the co-founder and CTO of Zooks, Jesse Levinson, says their companies will operate separately. He sees the proximity as just an extra bonus for future collaborations. The real reason they chose Seattle is because they want an operational design domain that has frequent and significant rain for testing. Zooks has developed weatherproofing and active rain mitigation for its sensors and they want to test and validate the tech in rain. Another reason they had their eyes on Seattle was its tunnels, its diverse street layout, and its AV policies. Automated vehicles are currently illegal in the city. With the physical conditions and the legalities squared away, it seems like the perfect place to do field tests on these robo-taxis. With all these different companies trying to achieve self-driving vehicles, it feels like this generation's space race, not to be confused with the other literal space race between SpaceX and Blue Origin. The robotaxi may seem like the final frontier before we're officially living in Back to the Future Part 2, but there are other taxi innovations to be considered. Companies like Boeing, Airbus, and Hyundai are all building air taxis, and the company with the most conditional pre-orders is British firm Vertical's VAX4 vehicle. Now before you get too excited, they aren't black and yellow cabs with hover technology underneath, though that would be awesome. The aircrafts are EVTOLs, which stand for electric vertical takeoff and landing. The closest thing the VAX4 can be compared to is a helicopter, but the similarities stop with the rotors. Helicopters are amazing feats of aviation, but they are a little noisy as far as the normal way to travel. They're also very expensive and fairly dangerous. If their rotor malfunctions, the entire aircraft just goes right down. But where a helicopter has one rotor, the VAX-4 has eight. If you lose a rotor, you don't lose the vehicle. You also don't have to use ear protection or microphones while on board the air taxi. Most models, including the VAX-4, use quiet electric motors that actually produce less car and then a Tesla driving the same distance on the ground. The idea behind air taxis is to create a quiet, pleasant, fast, and efficient way of getting around. The VAX4 can travel 100 plus miles at 200 miles per hour, but the concept was never to build a flying car. A better way to describe it is electrical air travel scaled down to taxi proportions, or a floating Uber that's better for the environment. No matter how you slice it, the air taxi is the next evolution of aviation. A quiet cleaner, more sustainable future for flying built from over 100 years of aviation history. But now that they've developed this new technology, they need to find a way to integrate it into urban areas. You can't exactly land an aircraft in the middle of the Trader Joe's parking lot. You can barely park a car in a Trader Joe's parking lot. Initially, they're likely to fly to and from existing airports and helipads, but they'll need their own spaces in cities to function as a taxi service. They need to be recharged, maintained, serviced, and stored within populated areas. One solution in the works is to build vertiports on top of or alongside existing buildings that already integrate bus, rail, and transit networks. This would make it easy for passengers to connect from one mode to another. We hope to see these automated vehicles soon. It sucks to drive tired and it would be awesome to fly right over traffic, but it's estimated that air taxis cost between one and three million dollars to build, so we'll still be setting our alarms.